So most of the videos that I do, I'm doing to introduce an idea or a feature or show off a project that I'm working on. Uh, but from time to time, I do a video to either get the conversation going about something or to, for the benefit of my future self, to remind myself how something works so that I don't screw it up again. So that's what this video is. This is really for the benefit of future me. Uh, I'm gonna talk about tool offsets and touch offs that I do on my milling machine and, uh, and how I've got that configured. If this isn't helpful to you, we'll just move along. And if it is, well, thanks for watching. Uh, let's go over to the bench and I'll kind of introduce how things work. My milling machine uses tool holders like this. This is an NMTB30. Uh, it's got a taper, uh, and then it goes into the spindle into a mating taper. Then the drawbar comes through and pulls it in tight. Once the tool is installed in the tool holder, uh, it's fixed and very repeatable. So I can take this out of the machine, put it back in again, and the, the Z position is consistent. I have tool holders for a number of different sizes, as well as uh, some that are set up for slitting saws and face mills. I think I have about a dozen or so. The way you would typically use this in Linux CNC is to designate one tool as a reference tool and consider its length to be effectively zero. So the control point for the tool is at zero. And then every other tool is measured relative to that length and the offset length between them is stored in the tool table. Then, if you switch from this tool to this tool in the middle of a job, you issue a G43 command right afterwards, and the offset length is read from the tool table and applied, and then this becomes the new zero. I don't have a very good way of measuring that offset length accurately and repeatedly. So I've got a couple of other tools that I thought I could kind of work with. Uh, the first is a, a Renishaw style touch probe uh, set up in the same kind of tool holder and I use this for touching the top of material as well as for probing holes to find the center. It's a very useful tool, not terribly expensive, but I really like it. I also have a tool setter this is uh, uh, purchased off eBay, not terribly expensive. And the idea with this, I think most people use it when they, they don't have tool holders like this, where they're installing the tool directly into a, a collet or a, a chuck. And uh, when you do that, the, of course, the, the Z offset length changes from one install to the next. It's not repeatable. So the idea is that once you install the tool, you have a routine that runs over to the tool setter and bumps the top of the switch and then that uh, that length is measured and applied to the tool at that point in time. I think what I'd like to do with my setup is to only use the tool setter at the time that I'm setting up a tool, that I'm putting a new tool into a tool holder. For instance, if I break one. What I would do is have this set on a, on a stable place somewhere on the table and use the probe to come over and probe the top of the tool setter. And then I would mark that as the zero position. So I'm basically using the probe as my reference tool. Once I set the zero position, I switch to whichever tool I'm setting up, load it in and switch it in Linux CNC. Then I jog over above the tool setter and I run it to probe the top of the tool setter. Then the offset gets stored with this and it gets added to a constant value to account, account for the, uh, the compression distance that this switch requires to activate. So let's set that up on the mill and see how it works. My tool setup process starts by changing to the probe tool in Linux CNC. Uh, the tool change uh, button will cause the spindle to retract and it'll prompt for the tool change and then I just put the the uh, probe tool in and confirm the tool change uh, with the button on the screen. Then I jog the uh, probe into a clear space over the flat part of the vise and put the tool setter underneath it and then jog down so the tip of the probe is just above the tool setter. 
Then I can run the probe top macro, which will uh, move the probe down and detect the top of the tool setter, and then retract up to five millimeters above that. It'll confirm that the probe is five millimeters above the top, and then I do a uh, touch off to set the position at Z plus five. Now I do a tool change uh, to the tool that I'm actually setting up. In this case, it's the spot drill. And you'll see that the offset is currently at 1.65 or something like that. It goes through the same process again, changing out the uh, probe for the tool that's called for. And confirming it. And then I can jog the tool down to just above the uh, tool setter and make sure that it's kind of centered in the middle and run the tool offset macro. This will move the cutter down until the uh, switch is activated. It actually does a slow and a fast pass. And then it'll return back the offsets, but it'll also store the offsets in the tool table. And if I switch to the tool table, you can see that the offset's now uh, 1.66. While I'm at it, I can do the same thing setting up as many tools as I want now that the zero position is established on the tool setter. So I'll set up this uh, slitting saw as well. For the slitting saw, it's important that the tool setter not be under the center, but under the blade, since the uh, control point that I want to establish is related to the blade, not the retaining nut at the bottom. Now that the tools are set up, let's see how to use them in everyday use. So for the everyday use process, it's actually a lot easier. I just switch to the probe tool, install the tool in the spindle, jog it to a safe spot over the top of the material and position the probe head right above the, the material. Then run the probe top macro and touch off at Z plus five again. Now I can switch to a tool that I want to use, in this case the spot drill that we set up already. I install the spot drill in the spindle, but the important thing at this point is that you have to switch to the MDI and issue a G43. You see right now the offset is at zero, but after I issue the G43, the offset's applied and the Z coordinate changes. Now if I jog the tool down and following the DRO, jog it down to zero, You'll see that it's right at the top of the material where it should be. So the macros that I'm using are pretty straightforward. Uh, the first one is the probe top and it uh, starts above the material and does a fast probe down 10 millimeters until it makes contact. Uh, then it uh, retracts from that position back uh, about a tenth of a, an inch and uh, then does a slow probe again until the probe trips a second time. And then it retracts up uh, five millimeters from that. The tool offset macro is similar. Uh, it's a little bit different. I've got uh, a first a, a local variable, local constant stored, which is the probe offset. And I have it set for two millimeters. That's to account for the compression distance on the tool setter probe. Uh, but then it comes down and it does the same probe, retract, and then slow probe uh, to find position. And then it uses the P5400 variable to uh, pull the tool number, the current tool number, and it stores the uh, probe offset plus the probed distance uh, into the tool table for that tool. So I've only been using this setup for a couple of days and so far things are working out okay. One thing I want to test more is whether I'm getting any kind of combined error from the two different probes uh, and whether uh, it consistently ends up with the Z position uh, where it should be. 
Uh, and then beyond that, the next steps that, uh, for me at least with this, uh, is to make the tool table that I've got in Linux CNC and the one that I have in the Path Workbench uh, is kind of synchronized so that I can uh, set up my tools in a Path job and have them correspond to tools in the tool table. And uh, I hope to post some videos on that in the future and let you know if it's working out or not. Uh, anyway, like I said, this video is mostly for my future self. And uh, if you find it useful, please leave a comment down below or, you know, thanks for watching.